Starters Club. Um, I'm going to be um, uh, giving an overview of the new JHPC documentation website, as well as um, explaining some updates that happened to the um, Bash RC file and the Slurm defaults file that um, uh, as they are documented on the team documentation website. So um, first of all, let's look at the new JHPC website. Um, you'll notice the same URL, jhpc.jhu.edu, uh, but um, it's a different layout now. Um, at the very top, they, they can put some um, uh, mer uh, warnings or updates for everyone to read such as this one about um, fast, fast scratch. Um, on the top right, you can switch it to dark mode if you prefer. Um, uh, and maybe most useful for, to everyone, there's a little help, um, a, sorry, a, a little search bar now. So let's say you want to just add, type, how do you ask for help? Um, you see a few different met, um, sections of the website here. And uh, there's already one here that is maybe the most relevant, which is about helpful hints for asking questions. Um, so that will navigate us to a specific um, uh, subsection of the website. Um, and in this particular um, section, they're talking about how you can ask for help, um, like um, how you should frame your, your message when you're asking for help. Um, and like um, a few different, pieces of information that might need if you're, if you're um, for example, um, let's say you have an SSH problem, um, the highlight here, like, please give us the output of these commands um, um, when you're reporting SSH problems. So there's a few different, um, you, know, you can navigate the website through searching, or you can navigate it by the menu on the left side. Um, so, uh, on About Us, they talk about um, the JHPC uh, model, which is how like the, um, uh, the, the idea behind uh, this cluster, how, how, it's, um, how it's funded, how it works, what are like overall like um, the number of cores and, uh, and RAM, um, um, storage, and a few other things. Um, how like people actually pay back um, for maintaining the, the operation of the cluster, how all that works. Um, so, I mean, for most of you, maybe that's um, um, not, as, not as informative. It could be informative for, let's say, uh, if you're a PI, you want to know a bit more about, uh, about the cluster. Um, the staff here highlights a lot of people we interact with through uh, BIOS-C support. Um, um, Jeffrey Tunnison, uh, John Yang, Mark Miller. Uh, the three of them are very responsive of BIOS support. Um, sorry, not BIOS support, bit support. Um, 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 so if you want to know a little bit more about, about the different uh, staff members, you can read about it there. Now, getting started, this is how um, a lot of you would actually um, I guess, interact for the first time with this website. Let's say you're a new user, you want to uh, request um, a user account or a new PI, um, as well as, um, let's say you have been given a, um, your, your, you have been scheduled your orientation session. You can find over here the, the documentation for that orientation session, which is this uh, PDF. Now, you'll notice that there's two names over here, JHPC and C-sub. Um, that's because um, um, they have a, a smaller cluster um, which works on the CM CMS, Medicare, and Medicaid data, and they call it the C-sub cluster. Um, so at some point later on, we're going to see like a cluster argument, um, and that's basically like related to to the two clusters you could have. Um, all right. Um, now, um, maybe a question you could have at some point is like, hey, what happens if I want to have HIPAA data on JHPC? 
HIPAA is, is um, I forget the acronym, but it's basically for, um, you want to have data that is, uh, that can personally identify someone, right? Um, you have to be very careful how you store it and all of that. And, uh, you know, the, the good thing about GHPC is that um, it is HIPAA compliant um, as long as um, you just restrict back access to the to a specific directory where you're working on the data. Um, so let's say we want to download some data from dbgap, some DNA genotype data for a specific study that is uh, personally identifiable information. Uh, we would probably have to create like a new user group that is very specific to just the people that are part of this dbgap request. Um, um, so this is just something to keep in mind um, that uh, um, you know, JSPC is HIPAA compliant, um, and you just need to uh, maybe make a, a new user group, uh, make sure that everyone on the user group is part of, let's say, your dbgap request, things like that. Um, now, this documentation is um, live, um, like this documentation website is still like being built. Um, um, so let me see if I can find an example. Part. Um, um, actually, I think I know one. Uh, uh, um, so, like, um, we can see here the new user form. Um, they just have a screenshot of how the form used to look on the old website, um, but they don't have. They haven't actually updated this. Um, um, so, um, uh, because of of the um, transition and things being a bit in flux, this is also like a good opportunity for people to maybe chime in on, on how um, you have any questions about the documentation website or, or if um, based on your experience, you think like, hey, maybe we can document this a little bit better, a little bit clearer. Right? Um, I remember that um, not so long ago when uh, Nick presented at uh, Hopkins, um, Biostats at the Computing Club, uh, one of the students in the audience was asking about um, uh, translating maybe some um, uh, common terms, common terminology into um, uh, more um, broader terms that you can understand without having to know all of the technicalities of things. So let's say you, you encounter such a term that hasn't been described elsewhere. Um, um, the, this call documentation website is actually also available on GitHub. So um, um, JSPC has its own um, um, organization account or um, or like individual account. I don't know if it's an individual. But anyways, they have their own GitHub account, jspc-jhu. And among their public repositories, they have one of them called jspc underscore mkdocs. NK Docs is the software that they're using to actually build the documentation website. Um, and so, um, um, let's say you you've, uh, you notice something that you want to get feedback to JHPC uh, admins. One way you can do it is through the issues page over here, uh, and just make an issue and be like, hey, um, um, you know, I found. Uh, this section of the documentation wide a bit a little bit confusing. Could um, could we maybe we could we maybe document it in this other way? Um, or um, let's say that um, um, we encounter an error that even though it's a bit rare, it might actually be quite common. Um, we should maybe um, we want to report it to the JHPC admin so that they can have. Um, Keep in mind as uh, maybe something that needs to be um, added somewhere on the documentation website. Um, and so when you make an issue like that, um, um, uh, uh, um, oh. mm. I guess actually it doesn't let you make a, uh, Fine. Um, maybe we can make issues the way I thought we could. Um, oh, there's discussions. 
I a new discussion. Okay. So here we could be like, hey, um, on website feedback, we could be like, um, you know, uh, maybe this, um, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna actually gonna submit it, but it could be like, hey, um, 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 let's say you have something like this, right? A message like that. I mean, I already know the answer for the form is, <laughs> but like you could like, you know, make a message like this and include a link to, uh, uh, you know, the actual sub page of the documentation website, you know, maybe include a screenshot or even annotate your screenshot, things like that. Um, but you could also, if you wanted to navigate to um, the documentation directory uh, docs. Um, and there, this is actually how things are organized. Let's say, for example, on their, um, um, on their help, um, we see that they have a few different um, markdown files. So it looks like the organization for MK docs involves a few um, like chapter directories, which in this case, the chapter is help. Um, and then you can have like subsections of it, which are these different markdown files. And so here you can find like the external one. Um, and let's say, um, 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 uh, let's say we want to add a peer here at the end of the sentence or something. Um, you can just look at the code mode and be like, hey, there's a missing period over here, right? I mean, that's a super tiny thing, but uh, uh, but um, by doing this, you can include the permalink and be a lot more precise and like where you think things need to be updated when you make um, um, an issue uh, documenting um, something you think uh, could be improved on the documentation website. So I want to encourage people to, to try to provide feedback. Um, of course, um, this is not the only way. You can also um, um, you can also send a message to beat help the mailing list, um, and and uh, provide your feedback on on a specific uh, part of the documentation website. Um, um, so um, my my overall point is like there's a lot to document. Uh, we use HPC in many different ways, all of us here at Libre, but also like external to Libre. Um, and um, I think it would be nice to give back to the JHPC community by, um, if there's any issues that we notice on the documentation website by, by uh, reporting them and trying to provide uh, constructive feedback on how it could be improved. Uh, because then not only ours will benefit ourselves, uh, but also like our colleagues and, and the community in general. Um, and so if everyone chimes in, um, I think that that can help. Um, now, something else I wanted to highlight here is on their getting help basics, we can um, actually get the link to archives for bit help. Um, um, there's a link also for the uh, archives for bit support, but those are actually restricted. So only, only bit support admins can actually look at that. And so when you open this uh, link for bit help, um, it's going to ask you to confirm that you're not a spammer. And once you do that, uh, now you can actually uh, browse um, questions that have been asked in the past. You can see here there's uh, two years, 2023, 2024, and uh, find the different months. So let's say we want to go to April. Um, and so um, it's going to show you a few of these messages per page. Um, so in this case, there's already two pages of questions that have happened um, in this month. Um, and it groups them by thread. So like, for example, I was asking here, like, how do you check whether you're in a compute node or a transfer node? And then there were a few um, replies by me, Gio, Mark, and myself again. Right? Uh, so it's a nice way to see the threads. Um, and you can open, let's say, this last one, uh, and we can see like all the messages and stuff. Um, and so 
maybe the thread subject um, is informative enough for you to understand what the thread is about. Uh, but let's say you actually encounter an error. Um, we could also say like, hey, I'm going to search, for example, uh, uh, um, some specific keyword. And so um, this is one that I, I know because I was talking about it recently. Um, let's learn the underscore node name. Um, and so like, this is one way you can search um, across BitHelp messages and find some uh, maybe relevant messages to the problem that you're encountering. Um, and so when you're asking for help, I would actually encourage you to first search the BitHelp um, archive. Um, and let's say you, you know, maybe your situation isn't exactly the same as what was described on this thread. Well, you can still include the link to it. It's going to be um, a specific link to a particular message. You can see at the top, it says MSG 00010. That's a specific ID of the message for this month. Um, and so that, that can help us, uh, I guess, um, um, uh, basically expand um, our knowledge and um, and uh, reduce, a, I guess, a, a little bit of the redundancy if you're asking a question that someone else has already asked. It can also maybe help you highlight, like, hey, my issue is a little bit different than this other issue because of X or Y reason. Um, um, so that's something I would highly encourage people to, to check um, um, and use, actually. So like, if you wanted to bookmark something, I would probably bookmark this Help Basics uh, page over here. Um, just so you remember, like, what are the email lists, and then as well as have easily accessible um, the link to the archives. Um, um, now, um, in terms of um, uh, the situation that we were talking about uh, with a student who uh, uh, was a bit... Um, um, you know, facing, I guess, the uphill battle of, of getting started with like a bunch of new terms that, that are unfamiliar to you. Um, the glossary, glossary, how do you pronounce it? Glossary, yeah. Glossary on their getting help um, defines a, a few common um, um, acronyms, words, or like collection of words that um, uh, are used frequently in the rest of the documentation of the uh, website. So this could be a good, um, uh, you know, page to sometimes read and double check um, if you have a question. Of course, it, uh, you can only you know document so many terms, um, uh, but um, if there's one in particular that you're um, you think would be useful to document for new users, you could maybe um, suggest like, hey, could we document X or Y term right, or phrase? Um, Cool. Now, um, um, the frequently asked questions page has a few different things here about like how to transfer, how to log in. Uh, for example, let's say you have bad permissions for SSH. Um, it has a link here for like how you should actually document the permissions. This is an issue that we've uh, faced recently with uh, uh, when one of the people in my team um, got their computer uh, uh, wiped clean, uh, we had some issues with the permissions. This page over here highlights what are the right permissions you should have for, for all of these configuration files for SSH. Um, so um, that FAQ page is quite useful, but it's, um, um, but it, uh, one um, component of JHPC that is really large is Slurm. Um, and so instead of documenting all of, all of the questions about Slurm on this general FAQ, they have a separate FAQ for just Slurm. Um, so that would be under the job skiller Slurm um, chapter of, of the documentation website. So they have a lot of information here. Um, and you could be like, hey, you know, how do I know what um, partitions exist, right? Um, or um, um, uh, queues, as they were called on um, SGE, 
right? Um, and so it says like, well, you could use this or slurm pick um, command, and in particular, if you use the dash h, you can see some help information, and like this page over here is going to document a few more things. Now, I just want to highlight that if you're using slurm pick, um, this command actually queries everything from the job scheduler, um, and so you should like never use the watch command on slurm pick because you're going to otherwise um, uh, require a lot of resources from the from the um, uh, from the job manager. Um, so it's okay to type it once in a while, like interactively, but like don't have it loop um, and and query it like every few seconds. Um, um, so that's something that um, Jeffrey um, um, wanted me to highlight uh, today. Um, um, Cool. So there's a lot of things here, right? Uh, but um, as you can probably tell a little bit, <laughs> uh, we go to the uh, archive. I recently asked a, quite a few questions earlier this week. Um, you can see my name pop up quite a few times on BitHelp. Um, and that's because I, um, I needed some help understanding a few things. Um, so uh, Gio uh, replied a few of my emails as well as Mark Miller. Um, I also chatted a little bit with Nick about some of my questions before I even asked them. Um, and then uh, Jeffrey also chimed in. So one of the things I was asking about is the documentation for a file called Slurm defaults. And so at this point, I'm going to go to our um, team documentation website um, and go all the way to chapter 17, JHPC files or under configuration files. Um, and so Slurm defaults um, is a new file um, um, that you can have at, um, at JSPC that specifies uh, default arguments uh, for uh, your S run and S batches uh, commands. And so, um, uh, probably what you want to specify is like your default memory. Uh, so here I specify two gigs as the default memory that I want to have. And then you can also specify your email that you want to have, such as uh, later on if you're using, let's say, um, the Slurm jobs by Nick, um, um, you're using the, um, the job single function and say like, hey, um, email, I want to get an email like when it begins, it ends, it fails, or everything. Um, if you enable any of these options, um, well, the cluster needs to know what was your email address. Um, and so the, the easiest way to do this is to just have it on your Slurm defaults file. Now, um, as documented on this Git help thread, um, the actual official documentation of Slurm defaults is a little bit um, hard to find. Um, and so Jeffrey uh, Tunnison, he explains a bit of, uh, of the background of why, like, uh, right now, the, the documentation that we have on the on the JSPC website is a bit limited. Uh, but I would highly recommend that you add this file and specify your uh, memory limit as well as your email. Um, now, um, Another thing that I updated recently was the bash RC file that I recommend for people. So I'm going to um, go through the, um, uh, the new file. And, um, and I highly recommend that everyone updates this, because um, the way the, the recommended file was set up uh, was creating some problems um, for, let's say, if you're using Cyberduck on the transfer node. Um, um, there were some issues with like um, uh, modules being loaded, et cetera. Um, and so I did quite a bit of debugging and got a bit of help to, uh, to update this. And so what we have at the very beginning is these are common lines that specify basically like also uh, use the general bash RC file that is like just common to everyone. Once you have that, um, I would recommend that you define any aliases that you want. Uh, for accessing different directories that you frequently um, access. So um, don't, don't just blindly copy paste the new bash or C into, um, into uh, your JHPC 
uh, account. Uh, make sure that you save any aliases that you were using before that maybe I haven't included over here. Um, so I, I will define all of these aliases at the very beginning. And the reason why I wanted to define them at the very beginning is that um, this way, if you want to use the aliases in any of your scripts, you are going to be able to use them. Um, otherwise, you, um, you might not. After that, um, um, when I used Speakeasy, um a few months ago, I realized that like this exporting the Java options was creating a conflict. So um, I no longer have the Java options um, enabled on my Bosch RC by default. Uh, although there's probably some programs where you want to have this set up, let's say um, uh, uh, BFG, um, which is a Java program, you probably want to set um, that up. Um, so I left it there as a, as a reminder of, of how you can specify how much memory you're going to um, allow your Java programs to have. Um, um, now, the link that I have here is probably outdated, so I'll need to update that at some point. After that, I have the UMask to basically <laughs> specify how um, any new file that you make, what are going to be the permissions for it. Uh, next, I have this um, um, hieroglyphic looking piece of code that GeoPortea provided. And um, uh, I had to ask for a further clarification of what this command is doing. And so there's a specific variable called just the dash variable, which is um, how you um, have called your session, uh, your bash session, I guess. Um, and what this command is doing is like it's checking if you look at it and um, stop where you have the first I, is it still the same as just the general thing? And so this is one way of knowing whether you are on I, which is an interactive session. Um, and um, this little uh, piece of code is quite helpful to avoid some bugs that uh, you might otherwise encounter with, let's say, um, Cyberduck or other tools. Um, Cyberduck, in particular, uh, doesn't like it if your bash of C is printing anything. Um, and it could, like, um, um, uh, and if there are any errors or stuff like that, it's going to um, give you some cryptic warnings when you are um, trying to use uh, Cyberduck. So let me uh, have over here a screenshot. Um, about one of those type of errors that you can get with Cyberdoc. This interoperability failure is one of the type of errors you can get. Um, um, there's also uh, uh, there's I think a screenshot over here. Um, well, sorry, there, there wasn't. Um, but you can also get an error message that says like invalid packet indicated length, and then some number says too large. Uh, so these type of um, errors are related to, for example, having an echo statement in your bash or C. Um, and so uh, this um, uh, command um, that Geo provided helps us say, like, okay, if we're in a non-interactive session, then just stop the bash or C execution at this point. Um, and so after that, I have everything else that I need when I'm, I'm actually on an interactive session. Um, uh, everything above is things that I will need even um, if I'm not on an interactive session. Um, and everything below is things that I do need on interactive sessions. So one of them is like modifying the up and down arrow behavior, which I do with this um, input RC file, uh, which is documented a bit further below. Uh, things about the history um, length, which are related to the up and down arrow behaviors. Um, I have this remove interactive command, which only works if you're on an interactive session anyways. So that's why I have this alias um, further down. Um, um, colors, uh, they don't really matter if for your log file, if you're using ls. So I only have them defined um, uh, on the interactive um, setup. Um, uh, also, our mate. Um, is something I only use interactively, so I also have it just there. Um, cool. Now let's say I'm on a compute node 
or a transfer node interactively, at that point, I do want to load a, a set of modules. Uh, these are the modules that I uh, always load by default. You might have a different set, but I like to load git status size, git a lar large file storage, are made for opening files interactively, then as well as the latest version of, um, of uh, Bioconductor R release, which is 4.3.x. That's about to change in a, in, in a month or so. Mm -hmm. and then ask, what is the module git status size? Yeah, so this is, um, there's this tool uh, called git status size that uh, basically is a, um, you're running on the root level of a project and um, will tell you when you type git status size, it will tell you like what is the file size of the things you have in version control. Mm -hmm. Um, which is easy, it makes it a little bit helpful um, to just pay attention and not version control a large file. Um, so, I mean, I, I like to use that command. Uh, that's why I have it over there. Um, now, with something new um, that wasn't in the, in the previous versions of the bash or C file is this new shortcut called JS run. So, it's like S run but with a J at the prefix at the top. And so this is, um, I actually got this um, um, this piece of code from the new version of the JSPC documentation website. Um, and so they're saying like, well, what if you, you know, if you had the option of typing S run with all of this stuff or JS run with just this, which one would you rather use, right? Uh, well, I would, I would like to reuse the version that is shorter. Um, and so the this shortcut over here says like basically, um, whatever you want to, um, whatever else you type, that those are giving the options that come to um, your SRUN command after uh, PTY and X11. That, that way you don't have to type PTY and X11 all the time. Um, let's say you just want to change the memory, you want to change the partition, at that point, you can type it. Um, and so this makes, um, it's kind of like an alias, but it um, has to be declared as a function um, um, just to uh, make things work uh, syntax-wise. So it's uh, pretty nice. I added that one. I didn't add this other one called AJX run. This one will be like, hey, do you just want to skip X11? Because I, in general, I always want to be using X11 uh, if I'm working interactively. Uh, so I didn't include that one on the default uh, bash or C file. Finally, um, I um, edit what is called the PS1 environment variable. That variable controls how your prompt looks like. Um, and I realized that there was um, um, that if you load the conda R module, that loads a conda module, and that module has a bash script that modifies the PS1 variable. So in previous versions of the of the uh, of the um, bash rc file, I was defining PS1 before loading modules, and that meant that like then whenever I loaded on the R, that would like overwrite uh, my PS1 variable, um, um, and so uh, um, I didn't want that to happen. So basically, the the way I have defined my PS1 variable, um, sorry. Uh, um uh, just gonna use the this run. Um, um I like to just have the date and the let's say um and just the current directory of where I am at. Not the full not the full path. I just want to have like the uh the base name of the directory that I'm working on. Otherwise, like uh my prompt gets super large, and then I have very little space to actually see what I'm typing. Um, so all of this, you know, um, there was a lot of like troubleshooting earlier in the week to make sure that um, this bash RC uh, file was working correctly. Um, um, and so it still has like the same main concepts that the previous bash RC file had, but now it, um, the order of things actually matters to avoid a few different bugs. Um, and um, you know, this was quite useful. Um, 
the earlier version also had um, a few things here that um, uh, were like not uh, properly configured. Um, and so now like, let's say I log into the transfer node, um, you know, my same bash or C is working correctly there too. Um, and here I'm doing it in an interactive session. That's why like all these modules are being loaded. Uh, oh. um, so uh, I'm pretty happy now with the status of the bash or C file, as well as the Slurm defaults. Um, I'm aware that Jeffrey Tunison is gonna, at some point, uh, I mean, he has a lot of things on his plate, but at some point he's going to potentially update this learn defaults documentation on the JHPC website. Um, and so we, there might be f um, some future edits to this uh, file. Um, um, oh, so um, there's a lot of information out there, right? Um, um, and um, and there's a lot that is still on, in construction. Um, but um, uh, some commands you might want to know are, for example, under monitoring your, um, your jobs. There's a few commands here to, to check how, um, you know, um, how your job is doing. And a very common question is, when will my job start? And so, um, uh, they, they explain in a lot of detail here, like um, what are the maybe um, factors influencing why your job hasn't started just yet. Um, and so there's a, there's a few commands here that um, are, um, um, I wouldn't be able to explain to you right now, but uh, this, there's this S prior command with a few different options. Um, and you can reformat it a little bit. Um, and um, basically some of these commands can be quite useful to check what is, for example, the priority values of your jobs, right? Um, if the priority is super low, that could explain why your job hasn't started yet. Um, and there's a few other uh, reasons that are explained in this page. I'm not going to like read it out loud right now, um, um, but I, you know, I do recommend that you read it in detail. And if you have any questions, um, you know, please report them either via bit help or um, via the uh, GitHub uh, issues that I just described um, um, a few minutes ago. Okay, so um, to me, this signifies like um, basically the end of uh, SGE um, um, and really like. Um, turning the page and embracing Slurm as um, the job scheduler for JSPC and embracing all the changes that came along with it um, uh, for this new version of um, uh, that we call JSPC version three that involves um, um, basically a different um, uh, software, operating system software. Um, so, um, um, yeah, I, I find this website very useful, um, and I would be happy if um, if um, we as a community contributed to 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 tidying things up a little bit if uh, if needed. Uh, over time, of course, the, the documentation website is going to look a lot more solid. Um, so I also want to give a shout out to JSPC um, bit support uh, members who are like working on on this documentation website as well as the people who answered a few of my questions on bit help earlier this week, so I could update this bash or C file, right, um, properly. Oh, so with that, I'll end the session.